probably the best way to describe it is not quite as much fun as it used to be. Actually going out in a, in a four ship, going to the range or, or going to the air, working area for air to air, that was a lot of fun. With these missions, the amount of work you put into it, planning them and all, you go up single ship, you run through what could be called as a little bit of mundane, um, it takes a different mindset. You have to really concentrate and, and the rewards are totally different than they were in the operational field. The runways and taxiways of Edwards Air Force Base are constantly abuzz with the sound of aircraft. Throughout the morning, T-38 jet trainers take off, giving the test pilot candidates an opportunity to escape the classroom for a few hours. Sharing the runways are experimental and training aircraft from NASA's nearby Ames Dryden Research Facility. The distinctive white and blue paint schemes of the NASA planes stand out from the military markings of Air Force aircraft. One site that is especially familiar at Edwards is the unique orange and white paint scheme of the base's chase aircraft. Two steady performers are the A-7 Corsair and the F-4 Phantom. The A-7 Corsair is a Vietnam-era ground attack aircraft. Here its role leans towards the scientific. The A-7 stablemate in Vietnam was the F-4 Phantom Fighter. The F-4 with its two-seat configuration lends itself to missions where an extra pair of hands or eyes are needed. Another veteran twin-seat aircraft is the T-37 Tweety Bird Trainer. The workhorse of the Flight Test Center's fleet is the F-16 Fighting Falcon. The F-16 is one of the Air Force's premier combat aircraft. Here at Edwards, it is one of the more essential chase planes. The task of test pilots is not simply to fly the latest jets. Aircraft that have already been in service for some years, such as the F-15 and F-16, undergo periodic upgrades to improve their performance. For example, a new computer might be added to their flight controls, or an aircraft might be adapted to fire a new type of missile. Once new features are added, it's necessary to test all these aircraft types to make certain the improvements work properly. Fighters don't stay stagnant. As, te as technology improves for the potential threat, then you need to, to counter that, their new technology with some new ideas of your own. That new equipment needs to be tested properly. Things that uh, the F-15 and F-16 community could be testing Fleet Edwards are not only new avionics, new radar units, or new software tapes to the radar units, but new weapons and possibly some new flight control laws that might help the way the airplane handles. The F-16 test force is one of our busiest test forces as far as number of sorties, number of hours per month. And uh, that airplane's been around for quite a while, but there's so many new things that they're doing to it right now to make the airplane better for the line user. Sharing the runways at Edwards is the C-17 Globemaster III transporter. Airlifts are an important ingredient in modern warfare. Developed by McDonnell Douglas, the C-17 was intended to modernize the airlift command and improve the ability of the Air Force to deliver combat loads anywhere in the world. The C-17 is a, an airlift that is designed to be both strategic and tactical and uh, to do direct delivery into the combat airfields. Uh, current airframes, airlifters uh, have to go from, let's say, from the States to a big base in Europe and transfer the, the cargo load to 130s of trains or trucks to get it to the combat troops that need it. Well, with the C-17, we can just take it from the States direct to the troops that need it out in the field. Its main battle tanks, Bradley infantry fighting vehicles, and M113 armored personnel carriers from Rhine Main Air Base in Germany directly to Iraq.
Air Force test pilots in multi-engine aircraft at times share the cockpit with civilian test pilots. The C-17 test program included McDonnell Douglas test pilots due to their familiarity with earlier phases of the transporter's design and development. The contractors, the test pilots they have are required by regulation to have attended either the Naval or the Air Force test pilot school and they have in the past all the guys we have. And we swap seats, you know, if I fly right seat today, the next mission I fly, I fly left seat. And the same with the contractor pilots. So it's, it's truly a mix, it's a, a team effort to get the testing completed. The C-17 program set test records at Edwards, completing over 30 test flights in the first 100 days of flying. Computer-assisted aircraft design and flight simulation make aircraft testing a less dangerous and risky venture than it was at the dawn of the jet age. But at the same time, it has reshaped the requirements for test pilots, demanding a rare blend of piloting skill and engineering aptitude. Despite the undefeated combat record of the F-15 Eagle, it is in the process of being replaced by the F-A-22 Raptor. This jet began life as the YF-22 in the Advanced Tactical Fighter Test Evaluation. Starting in 1981, the ATF program was a competitive development effort with two industrial teams designing separate aircraft, the YF-22 and YF-23. The Air Force was looking for major breakthroughs in two areas of fighter design. First, they wanted the new fighter to incorporate as many stealth features as possible without compromising the aircraft's performance. Earlier stealth aircraft, such as the F-117A Nighthawk, were primarily ground attack aircraft, not intended for dogfighting. The stealth configurations on the F-117 are ill-suited to a fast, maneuverable fighter. So a new generation of stealth technology was needed. Stealth is intended to reduce the aircraft's visibility to enemy radar. This is critical in modern dogfighting, as radar is used to guide long-range missiles. By reducing radar visibility, the stealth fighter pilot can target and eliminate his opponent before being spotted. In pilot's lingo, stealth technology gives the fighter a first-look, first-kill advantage.